Hello everybody, this is actually the first episode of a new series I'm doing. My What's It's Face series is meant to focus on art tips and character analysis for the most part, but I thought it'd be neat to start another one. So welcome to What If. Did I totally get inspired by Marvel on this one? Yes, don't judge me. <laughs> so this series is going to just be a bunch of alternate reality headcanons and stuff like that. Starting with, what if Sunny grew up in the Scorpion Den? This is a great example of the whole nature versus nurture debate that's always going on. Does your personality or your situation define you, or is it a mix? Honestly, this had me going back and forth for a while, because Sunny has already proven that she blooms happy even in bad situations, since growing up under the mountain wasn't the best of Dragonette Hoods, even with her four siblings. She wouldn't be a case of a total 180 personality switch, but things are definitely a little different. When Sunny was born, Thorn was delighted. Her Dragonette seemed perfect to her, even with a harmless tail and her smaller size. Sunny's mom was always kind to her, and they spent a lot of time together as Sunny grew up. Since she was always with her mom, Sunny really gained an appreciation for everything that was going on in the Scorpion Den. Thorne's methods may have been frowned upon by some of the higher class aristocracy, but nobody could say that she didn't get things done. Sunny grew up seeing her mom break laws to try and negate their outcome, so while her sense of morality is pretty strong, it doesn't necessarily align with the laws put down on Crumbly Scrolls. Sunny had trouble making friends growing up. Between her little oddities and her uncommon tendency toward cheerfulness, coupled with her mother's status and the general attitude of life in the den, most dragonettes her age tended away from Sunny. However, when Thorn came back with a new dragonette who was just as small as Sunny, if not quite as harmless, she finally found a good friend. Keebly and Sunny spent the lighter part of their childhood together. Keebly slowly began getting more and more active within Thorn's operation, and Sunny began to find herself wishing to follow in her mother and best friend's footsteps. After all, there must be something she could do to help, right? wrong. Or so her mother thought. Thorne loved Sunny, but even though she'd been training her daughter in self-defense ever since she could walk, Sunny was kind of helpless. And Thorne couldn't just send her daughter out defenseless into the scorpion den. Sunny didn't take this verdict well. She'd always been treated as if she could never be dangerous just because she didn't have the tail barb and she was a little smaller. As time went by, Sunny decided that she didn't need her mom's help to be dangerous. There were plenty of other dragons she could learn from. Sunny apprentices to an assassin in the area, without telling Thorne or Keebly. Although he suspects she's up to something, he can't quite put his claw on it. The assassin, an old dragoness named Quill, didn't have a barb either. However, hers was lost in battle. Upon return, she designed an artificial barb. However, hers was even better than the original, since she could pick and choose what poison she wanted to insert. Sunny spends a few years learning under Quill, who she eventually convinces to design Sunny a fake barb of her own. She keeps it a secret from Thorn when she gets it, however, waiting until the right moment to reveal herself. Sunny learns a lot from Quill. What poisons will achieve what end, how much will kill, and how much will just sedate, what will convince someone they have food poisoning instead of a quiet, quick death. Not only that, but Sunny learns other things as well. How to pass by unseen, how to bluff her way into almost anywhere, how to lie. Sunny doesn't want to become an assassin, but she finds herself growing into an excellent spy. The real test of Sunny's skills come when Vulture makes a little too much noise in the Scorpion Den. About the time when rumors of uproar in the Sky Kingdom come floating down from the north, Thorn catches wind of some dangerous plots of Vultures. He's putting something together underneath the den, some kind of smuggling ring bringing things into the city that Thorn wants nothing to do with. If nothing else, she thinks he's a fool for risking the chance that Imperial eyes might turn their way. Meanwhile, Keebly realizes that his mother is nowhere to be found. Sunny and Thorn are some of the few dragons who know that Cobra is Vulture's daughter, making Keebly his grandson. And even though his mom was never a very good mom, Keebly doesn't want to leave her to Vulture. However, Thorn knows she's playing a dangerous game plotting to take Vulture down, and she refuses to take any unnecessary risks involving Keebly's mom. Sunny watches them argue, and she saw how Keebly tried to hide his sadness when he realized Thorn couldn't do anything immediately to try and save her. However, Sunny sees a chance to finally prove herself. Not long after Keebly leaves Thorn, Sunny tracks him down with a proposal. It takes a while for her to convince him. Keebly thinks that Sunny is just trying recklessly to prove herself and that she'll die trying. Sunny reveals that she's not as helpless as everyone would like to think, and eventually she convinces him to work alongside her. Sunny puts together a plan, and together the two of them infiltrate Vulture's hideout. They go in under the guise of intending to join Vulture, playing to his pride. Keebly guesses correctly that his mother is being punished for giving away her son. Sunny gambles that by getting Keebly back and taking Thorne's daughter as well, Vulture will be too busy congratulating himself to look too closely at their intentions. Of course, he doesn't trust or even believe them right away, but Sunny doesn't need him to trust her. She just needs him to share a drink with her and Keebly. Basilisk's root, when ground up, is a tasteless white powder, a silent killer. 
Vulture would feel the headache first, which would slowly worsen until suddenly the den found itself short one more crime lord. She and Keebly had taken the antidote that morning just to make sure there were no mistakes. And by the time Vulture fell, when the uproar started, they were long gone, Cobra in tow. Well, <laughs> so that was definitely a little different than what I usually do, but I hope you guys liked it. I feel like this kind of stayed true to Sunny's canonical character while still making it different enough to stay interesting. Basically, Sunny found her own way to be dangerous, even though she wasn't born that way. I know I didn't get every detail correct with canon, but that's only because I refused to do research. Please excuse any faults with my timeline or events. I'd love to hear what you guys thought about this in the comment section. Are you guys interested in seeing more videos like this in a series? Be sure to check out the description of this video. You can find links there to my art and my Redbubble store, along with other information like what program I'm using today. Remember to like and comment if you enjoy the video, and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. I always have to, like, get into this voice when I record. Hello, everybody. This is the first of a... F I already screwed up. I should be fired. Basilisk's... Basilisk, basks, bas basilisks, 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 the weird root thing that causes poisonous death. Shoot, bas basilisk, basilisk, basilisks. Basilisk's root cheese. <laughs> Basilisk's. Ah! Oh! Bas. <laughs> I'm really struggling here. <laughs> okay. Basilisk's root. <laughs> Basilisk's root. Oh, shoot, I was laughing. I, I said it right and I was laughing. I'm gonna get back into my dramatic voice. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Basilisk's root, when ground up, is to. Ah! Did you hear it? I pronounced it right and then I screwed up the second part of the sentence. <laughs> Just send me to jail. <laughs> okay. Basilisk's root, when ground up, is a tasteless white powder. I'm still kind of laughing, but it's gonna have to work.